the great backyard bird count. I've got with me today the Nikon Z9. All right, look guys, I got a little off track. They are still going nuts. I wonder if we've got a second premiere. There it is, it just flew overhead. It's right above me. It's right, literally right above me. It is a hawk, it's another hawk. And guys, is that a kingfisher? Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is a really exciting weekend for anybody that loves birds because it's the Great Backyard Bird Count. Now this is a four day event that takes place between February 16th to February 19th and the goal is to just go outside and look for birds, listen for birds, and record as many of them as you can, even if it's just for 15 minutes. This is a worldwide event that's put on by Cornell University and they use the data for research and to learn about, you know, the variety of birds that are still out there. And um, it's just a great way to contribute to bird research and to science. So I'm gonna be out and about at a few different spots this weekend participating as well. And if you'd like to participate, all you have to do is download or um, go to the website for this app called eBird or its sister app Merlin and you can just record the birds that you're seeing and all of that data automatically goes to the researchers. So I've got with me today the Nikon Z9, the 500PF. Um, can't miss the opportunity for some bird photography as well. So we'll be participating all weekend, seeing what we see, testing out the new firmware 4.1 bird autofocus subject detection mode which so far has been pretty fantastic. So we'll see how that compares to the old animal autofocus uh, subject detection. And uh, yeah, what a great opportunity to feed two birds with one scone. So for my first stop this morning, I actually stopped at one of my favorite parks and um, you might not recognize it, but this is the very first place I ever recorded a YouTube video. So uh, a little bit of a special spot. Uh, but one of the things I love about it is the variety of habitats. We're about to come up on my favorite spot in a second, so I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let me show you what I mean when I say that I really love this park. One of the best ways to find birds if you're out looking, and of course we're out looking because of the Great Backyard Bird Count 2024, um, is to look for something called an ecotone, which is the area in between two habitats. And what, what I love about this park is that it has so many diverging ecotones. You can see a real variety of birds if you know where to look. So here, let me spin you around and I'll show you what I mean. So, Right now I'm walking on the trail here and to my right is the edge of a forest, a wooded forest. And to the left, we've got this really big field here that's full of these grasses, these native grasses. And um, there's also within the forest, a bit of a wetland right over here. So these ecotones all diverge right here and in the spring, you'll see you know, indigo buntings and warblers and woodpeckers and owls and hawks, just you name it, just all right here. It is a little bit of a mistake in my opinion, unless you really know what you're looking for, to go deep into the woods looking for birds. And that's one of the 
first mistakes that I made as a, a new fresh birder. I thought, I'll just go on a hike through the woods and I'll see a ton of birds. But what I always ended up finding is that 80 to 90% of the birds are right on the edge of the forest, right by the field, right by the parking lot, and not deep in the woods. So if you wanna count as many birds as possible, find two diverging ecotones. So here's another tip, sit still. If you're always on the move, walking around, birds are gonna hide from you. Uh, they're gonna hear you coming and take shelter or fly away. And it's gonna feel like your trail is empty. If you sit still and you listen, all of a sudden you'll notice that your surroundings just come alive. You'll hear birds, you'll see birds, and it's a great way to increase your count and maximize the number of birds that you see when you're out on an outing. So sit still. Oh, hello. It's a goldfinch. Finchy? Let's get a shot. It's a little bit of ways. talked about this on the channel but last month I had a little bit of a health scare um, I, I'd come down with COVID it attacked my heart I ended up in the hospital a few times it was a whole thing but thankfully I am on the mend and today my goal is just to take a nice little easy stroll get back out into the world of birds and just appreciate that I'm feeling better I'm feeling stronger and back out in the field so really glad to be back and uh, yeah So I got the 4.1 update for the Z9 the day it came out, and I've been playing around with the bird autofocus subject detection for a little while, and my initial impressions were that it's great. Like, I, I honestly feel in my gut that there's an improvement, um, or at least I thought. But this morning, I've been kind of testing it back and forth against the animal autofocus subject detection, and what I'm finding is that might have been placebo. They're both honestly really good. I'm getting the eye spot on for both modes with every bird I've shot this morning and I've been you know shooting a variety of these birds. So I think what I'll do is change locations and my next spot I'll choose somewhere with bird like ducks, waterfowl, and see if maybe the long-necked birds make any kind of difference. But I mean so far a good problem to have. Both modes are fantastic. Okay, so I've switched locations to this lovely lake, and uh, what I'm hoping to do here is to find some waterfowl. So birds, ducks, geese, maybe a heron, something with a longer neck. Because so far, the animal autofocus on the Z9 versus the bird autofocus on the Z9 are yielding similarly good results, which is a good thing. But I want to see if maybe for these types of birds, if I can get a noticeable improvement in eye autofocus, so see what we can find. I'll keep you posted. All right, look guys, I got a little off track because I heard some birds alarm calling. I 
followed the sound to this hawk, so I'm trying to quietly sneak up on this guy before he flies away. All right, check it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna mount you on here. It's hard to see. I'll take a shot and show you what I'm seeing right now, but this guy's behind a big branch. I can see his feathers. I wanna walk around and see if I can get a better angle. Oh, there he goes. Way up in the tree. Probably just looks like a dot to you. I'm hearing more alarm calls and I think it's some crows and blue jays just losing their minds. So let's, let's walk over this way. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're really, they're really fussing now. He's about to fly, he's about to fly. There he goes. Whew. That's the thrill of the chase right there. So I was looking for ducks and I, I got distracted because I heard some crows and jays alarm calling in the woods. So of course, I had to go check it out. So I walked through this fence into the woods and followed the sound of the alarm calls only to find the source of the calls. Although they are still going nuts. I wonder if we've got a second predator? Let me scout it out and see. I'll let you know if I see anything else. But So there's definitely something over there. I can see some faint movements and the crows are still going nuts. I don't know if you can, you can hear them. But unfortunately, as you can see right here, we've come up against some barbed wire. This is private property. Can't go over there. But I wonder what it is. Oh, there it is. It just flew over It's right above me. It's right up, literally right above me. It is a hawk. It's another hawk. Well, you never know what you're going to see out here. There it goes. Well, this bird has definitely created a ruckus. And I got a few shots of its friend before it flew away. Back on the mission, back on track, find some ducks, and maybe a heron or two. So, time to refocus, time to get some testing underway, and time to log all of the birds I just saw into eBird or Merlin for the Great Backyard Bird Count 2024. So, exciting stuff. I miss this. I miss being out. You just never know what you're going to see on these birding adventures. Now what we've got here is one of the most mean, nasty, foul creatures on God's green earth. It's called a goose, and it's from Canada. And I'm testing the eye autofocus for animals with the Z9 firmware version 4.1. And I don't have a monitor, so I'm going to have to talk you through what I'm seeing, but the box is right on the eye. If I, if I tilt down here and lose the head out of the frame, the box center mass right on the middle of the goose's body. But as soon as that eye is back, even with animal eye autofocus, the Z9 is just nailing it. Now over here we have one of the kindest creatures I've ever met. 
This is a Muscovy hybrid duck. And even this weird, horrible, sweet abomination is getting the focus directly on its eye and the Z9 is just tracking it incredibly. Okay, so I'm about to change locations. The battery on the Osmo Pocket 3 died, so I'm gonna head home, grab some lunch, get my batteries charged, and prepare to head out for my afternoon location. I can say that at this location, I was able to accomplish a few things. I got to test the animal detection versus the bird detection on the Z9, and I'm still at a place where I can't really tell a noticeable difference. They're, they're both great. I also was able to record a bunch of birds for the Great Backyard Bird Count 2024, including some geese, a bunch of mallards, this Muscovy duck hybrid, hawks, we had some crows and blue jays that I heard alarm calling, and a bunch of other smaller birds that uh, I was able to document along the way. So, you know, feeding two birds with one scone again, and uh, was able to accomplish two goals today. Uh, so now I'm gonna pack it up, head out, take a break, and I will see you at our third location this afternoon. Okay, so I came home and took a little break uh, because I'm still not up to 100% strength-wise and I needed a little bit of lunch and a little bit of rest. So now that I'm back, I was thinking about it and at the park, I wasn't really able to show you on a monitor how indistinguishable the bird autofocus mode is from the animal mode. So I decided to come out to my bird blind, set up my camera, and do a controlled test with um, some of the birds in my backyard so that you can see exactly what I mean. I mean, honestly, both modes are just really great. Um, but before I did that, I just wanted to show you. I came out here and this bird blind I have set up in the backyard got wrecked by this weather we've had recently. So let me show you what I mean. I've got this, this blind back here and it's just destroyed. There are poles missing and uh, it's just fallen apart. I think I'm gonna have to replace it, but I'll show you what I'm working with here. I've got my gimbal head and my tripod here, and right outside I have set up a little, um, a little stand with some feeders that's got some some, brand, some big log like sticks that I found at a park that are really mossy and nice. And so uh, I'm gonna set out some seed, kind of lure some birds in and take advantage of the controlled environment to test out you know, this autofocus. So I'm gonna go grab my camera. I'll show you how the results compare. And then this afternoon, I wanna take off and head to another park and see if we can you know, find an eager to heron or maybe even our friend the limpkin over at the limpkin park. So I'll, s so, all right, I'm gonna go grab my stuff and I'll see you in there. Okay, so here's what I wanted to demonstrate with this test. I've got my camera set to animal subject detection mode and you can see here that the Z9 is doing a great job of focusing on this house finch's eye even as it hops around. Then I switch the camera to bird subject detection mode and you'll see that the camera does an equally good job. See, still perfectly tracking the eye. It's even picking up multiple subjects in the background to switch between. As I pan over to an Eastern Bluebird, the camera has no trouble finding the eye right away. Back to animal subject detection mode and bird again. Same results. And I tested for over an hour. Both equally good.
one, so I made it out to the park. Had a little break, and uh, now I've got my tripod, and I'm ready to look for maybe a heron, maybe a limpkin. Uh, we'll see what we see out here. Uh, but I think I'm going to focus more on the backyard bird count from here on out, just to see what I can find. Uh, and I'm going to give the Z9 autofocus testing a little bit of a break for the day. I mean, really, as you could see in the bird blind, there, there really isn't a huge material difference between the animal autofocus uh, subject detection and the bird autofocus subject detection. They're both just really good. And I feel like I'm a broken record at this point because, you know, try as I may, I haven't really been able to find a huge difference between the two. Oh, buddy, found myself the heron. But I'm trying to be quiet because he's really close and I don't want to scare him away. So here's an interesting observation. As, oh my God, is that a kingfisher? Oh, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so that was a little wild. I was getting ready to make an observation about autofocus when I looked up and noticed that a kingfisher landed on a branch you know, right within my vicinity. So I got up and I was trying to sneak around to a little spot to take a shot and I completely lost track of the great blue heron. I startled it and then it started to fly away and in turn scared the kingfisher away. So I ended up with both birds gone uh, and now I'm on my way across the pond to see if I can find that kingfisher again. But I wanted to talk about that observation that I almost made. So as I was sitting there photographing the great blue heron, I noticed that I could not get a subject detection box on its eye. It was just center mass on its body. And no matter whether I was in DX mode, I moved the lens around, nothing seemed to be able to get it to catch the eye. And it was in pretty good light. And that's when I realized I was in animal subject detection mode. So I thought, oh, this could be my chance. And I switched it to bird autofocus subject detection mode. And sure enough, it immediately grabbed the eye and I was able to get some shots. So this is the first time I've been able to observe an improvement with that mode over animal detection mode. But I'm you know, glad that I was able to observe it, even though I basically said I wasn't going to be testing this anymore today. So Maybe if I find this heron or this kingfisher again, I'll try to repeat the test to see if I can get the same result, but that is a point for bird autofocus subject detection. So, great job, Nikon. Oh man, well, I seem to have lost both the kingfisher and the heron, as it goes with bird photography. You just never know. Uh, so I think I'm gonna wrap up here. I'll take a one little loop around just before I go but I'm starting to lose sun and uh, I'm still not 100% in terms of strength. So I'm gonna try to take it easy on my body, go home, rest, and charge up my batteries because tomorrow morning, oh, there's the heron, found it. <laughs> oh, I'll follow it on my way out. Okay, so as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by that distracting heron. I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the day, head home and charge up my batteries because tomorrow is a pretty big day. I'm meeting a group of friends for an all-day great backyard birding event. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll see a lot of birds and we can add to the pretty large collection of birds that I spotted today. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everyone. So I'm on the way to a group outing. Uh, I'm going to do uh, some more great backyard bird count this weekend with a few birding friends. I probably won't be filming, so I think this would be a good point to just wrap up the video by, you know, saying, hey, thanks for watching, and uh, I encourage everyone to get out and count some birds if you can. Um, even if the backyard bird count is over, you know, submitting your uh, sightings through eBird and Merlin is just a great way to support 
bird research and conservation. So I encourage everybody to do that. And if you like this video, um, stay tuned because spring migration is on the way and I'm planning on making a video documenting some of my adventures out trying to photograph and see birds during the migration as well, just like I did last year. So I'm really excited about that and I hope to see everybody there. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm signing off and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.